Hello again. I got cut off there. I don't know what's happening with my photo booth, if there's a natural cut off time. Um, yes, in celebration of my 60th um, year on this planet, um, I want to do a talk. It's been an absolutely monumental 10 years from 2008 when I had turned 50 to 2018 when I have turned 60. The learning and the, and the quantum evolution that occurred between that time is phenomenal. Um, I can only look at it at each decade. Uh, in the first 10 years I was, I was such an ultra sensitive child. I couldn't bear the vibrations of this world. Um, from where I came from or where we all come from but the super sensitive souls have an awareness of the warmth and when I arrived here obviously on the earth plane I had an awareness of the coldness and the harshness so I retreated into my little self and I, I, I did not speak much now there were clues to who I was in a prior life in how I held one hand over my other wrist. That is one of the, the clues to who I was in that renowned prior lifetime, which I, I didn't remember as a child. Um, in my teen years, I was starting to come out. There was a spirit forming in me although it was only used um, with close friends, of which I did not have many, a couple of school friends and a next door neighbour who was, in hindsight, someone known to me from a prior lifetime. Um, beautiful kitty, I speak to you every day, you know well. <laughs> and, and my grandmother. Uh, my beautiful, these were the two souls in my first 10 years of life that sustained me. The two beautiful hearts, my grandmother Catherine, Catherine Ward, and my, my, my beautiful neighbour, uh, Kitty King, another Catherine, Catherine King. Um, these two were the two warm souls, the two candles, the two lights that were in my life amongst all the harshness, all the harsh vibrations that I felt around me. These were the two that I was, um, that I felt comfortable and natural going towards. So they held the candle for me in the first uh, formative years. My dear beautiful grandmother died um, when I turned 11 and uh, I was devastated because one of my lights had gone out. <laughs> oh, bless her. Um, my knowledge wasn't what it is today. Um, between 10 and 20, those were my, I had this great urgency to want to go out. I wanted to explore. I had to go to dances. I had to go to discos. I had to go and meet lots of people. And of course, this had been denied me in my prior life because of the, um, the notoriety of who I was. I was uh, closed away in a convent. <laughs> There's another clue. Mm -hmm. um, so I didn't really have a li life as such other than scrubbing and cleaning and being subservient. Um, and my first two boyfriends were very serious, you know. My first boyfriend when I was 13 was very serious. Um, so I finished with him. I, I had to get out of that one. Um, my second boyfriend was making very serious hints about getting married and settling down when I was 14. So by the time my dearest friend and soul companion from the other side, who's on the other side now, Peter, by the time Peter came along and he was another serious soul, <laughs> I was running for the hills, you know, running. Get away from me. Stop trying to trap me, you people. So, um, unfortunately, me and Peter didn't get to spend all the um, 
the time that we required to do what we came to do on the earth plane together but that will be for another video um, we connected powerfully then we knew each other we were understanding uh, a great deal more than most other people so we were considered the weirdos you know the ones that didn't fit in we couldn't fit in he was another beautiful sensitive soul who he seen the light in me long before I seen the light in me so he held me up he was a great 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 support beautiful beautiful soul and I had to escape Peter unfortunately after years because uh, maybe I misunderstood mis mistook this love as as possession you know or wanting to protect me and I and I, I had to go out in the world to learn some terribly horrible lessons you know and to see some great ugliness in this world to understand the extremes of dark and light that operate in this world and then to overcome the dark that is in this world not there wasn't dark in me but I had to empower so that I would not be once more um, overcome or, or maybe driven out of this world um, by the power of lesser beings or lesser evolved souls so to speak so I had a very brutal sexual ass assault when I was 17 um, and that kept me prevented me getting close to anyone until I was 30 over 30 so between the age of 20 and 30 I was one angry messed up soul you know and I was escaping through alcohol and and I just couldn't get past this absolute abuse that had been done to me you know I, I couldn't get over it um, I went through such you know a dark night of the soul very dark night of the soul 10 years of running away I couldn't have relationships I couldn't let anyone get close to me my heart was so protected you know the barriers were right up there no one could get through no one no one could get through not even me <laughs> I couldn't get through to the reality you know I was screaming inwardly I was screaming I was a lost soul what am I doing here what am I doing in this world you know why am I here? Why am I suffering? Why am I struggling? So that brought me up to 30, you know. On my 30th birthday, I was devastated. I mean, that's a half a lifetime ago from where I am now. I was devastated that I was 30. My whole year, I was devastated. <laughs> I was old 30 years ago. I'm a lot younger now at 60 than I was when I was 30, I can assure you. From 30 to 40. Now I suppose my 20s as well I was training in various therapies because I was diagnosed with arthritis in those years. I think that had to do with the anger as well. The anger within myself at what my life was or why was I here amongst all these ugly people who are behaving in such abominable ways in this world and I couldn't for the life of me understand why I was here. I hadn't reconciled my soul at that stage yet. I was still on the search to remember and the experiences of course all these experiences were there to assist me to remember so if you have any horrible experience that happened in your life please understand they are an opportunity to learn or remember eventually when you get through these are they are tools to assist you so every dark experience or every light experience are are give you the same opportunity to awaken and learn and remember so um, even if you can't see the reason for for it yet if you're going through a dark time or, or or difficult experiences just remember you will get through it and the lesson you learn and the empowerment you learn once you have the silver thread and you have an awareness of why you had such an experience it becomes an empowerment for you then so for me, between the age then of 30 and 40, I was um, training in a lot of, of, of therapies because of my arthritis, you know. Uh, um, 
which was diagnosed about 1982. Um, and I wasn't getting any answers, you know, I wasn't getting any an answers down the me medical road. They were saying, yes, have a steroid injection, have a second steroid injection. After that, I wouldn't have any more. So they didn't want to know. So I, I started training in a lot of therapies and they helped a little bit for a time. But in the long run, they weren't, it wasn't, um, you know, they were stepping stones, if you like, but not solutions. Aromatherapy. Um, then in 94, in 1994, yeah, I, I, I was completely struck down with um, arthritis. Um, I wasn't paying attention, you know, I was angry still, you know, I felt my life was destroyed, I was drinking alcohol, I wasn't eating correct foods, so my body was paying a big price, you know, I was damaging myself far more than anyone else was damaging me at this point, you know, I was so unhappy, so incredibly unhappy and never wanting to be here. I never wanted to be here. I suppose the same could be said today, although I'm a lot more content. Uh, and I know now why, because it's a longing to be permanently back in those higher loving vibrations. Not getting glimpses of it through myself or through my connection with the universe via the sun. Um, my great connection with um, the wider universe um, came about by addressing all the grief, the pain, the letting go of all the baggage once I'd learned my lessons, um, that I was able to, you pass through your own internal sun center. And when you've passed through your internal sun center, having dropped all the baggage and the pain and the emotional aspect of your life that, that, that you've been carrying about, that I had been carrying about, um, like some kind of prize, you know, it's not a prize, let go of it, <laughs> let it go, be gone, surrender it, you know, you're done, don't let your past destroy your present presence, which is also destroying your future. Um, so once I'd passed over my own internal sun center, that was in 2005, so I guess that would have been between 40 and 50, um, The sun then started expanding. I became totally aware of a totally different thing. Thing is not the word. A totally different awareness, consciousness of what was going on. I had crossed over. I had opened the sun portal to the greater universe. I now had access to all that I need to connect with from the lower, which is this earth plane, to the higher, which is all of our solar system and the greater cosmos, Uranus, 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 um, and, and, and our great galaxy. You know, Once that porthole was opened, I then had access to see and experience so much more. This is when I had given birth to myself. This is when I had reawakened and come to understand how amazing it is, truly. Be surrounded by those major souls that have gone before. To be surrounded by a loving thought via that massive portal in the sky, which is complimenting you all the time when you come into awareness of it. When you have a loving thought, or you're talking to yourself, supposedly, you know, the universe is responding you know, always when you are awakened to this, when you have crossed your own sun center and you're in your highest vibrations, you're in your superior self or your supreme Godhead self. 
you're operating as a pure loving soul or pure consciousness, pure energy, then this universe, that greater universe, the macrocosmic universe, is absolutely downpouring you with love, vitality and energy, daily, hourly, by the minute. As and when, by a mere thought, you're connecting. You're never disconnected, so it's not even a connecting. It's a, a surging within the connection, a constant surging. This is what I've come to realise. And now the part of my journey I'm on, which I'm celebrating today very much, is the concentration this year, since the 21st of September 2017, when I was diagnosed with the choroidal, choroidal um, nevus, the mole in the back of the right eye. I then embarked on removing the remaining danger foods from my diet. And since then, I've been mostly on raw, occasionally vegan when it can't be helped. Or I mean vegetarian when it can't be helped. But basically it's juicing and salads. And um, if I need to have a munch of, of something sweet, um, I make my own chocolate. Pure, raw chocolate. Beautiful. I make some amazing chocolates. I make some amazing food. This journey into the physical health has been phenomenal. It's been absolutely phenomenal. And since the beginning of this year, the 1st of January, I have been very much embarking on a lot of fasting, purging, cleansing. Most days are a fast anyway because there's a minimum of 12 hours between eating one day and eating the next day. Generally, there's a 16 hour. Um, I don't eat, generally speaking, after 6 p.m. This is when your metabolism starts to slow down. You should be eating between 6 in the morning and 6 in the afternoon. The sun cycle, you know, the morning sun cycle from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. After 6 p.m. to midnight, you shouldn't be eating. And in fact, you should be going to bed about 9 or 10 o'clock and... Um, letting your body recover, unwind, um, or recharge by its own nature, following the sun cycle and following the moon cycle also, you know, two weeks in the ascending order and two weeks in the descending and um, coming to terms with the two portal cycles and living within that natural cycle. Um, so a lot of fasting, a lot of juicing, uh, and now I'm embarking on major liver cleanses and major parasite cleanses, uh, colon cleanse. I've recently bought a Terminator Zapper. This is a little electrical. Um, I will talk about all these subject matters individually on later videos about raw juicing, um, uh, various conditions and remedies for various conditions, you know, whether they be cancer, um, um, any any diseases, um, gum disease, eye disease, immune system disease, various things. All that I've learned so far, I will be sharing with you, with my own journey. Um, also, um, I, I would like to thank Mark Rothkrantz, who has been a, a phenomenal help along this raw journey. Um, I only discovered him about a year ago and, and, and I very much praise this guy. And all the more recent awareness of, of somebody who's, who's assisted humanity greatly um, is Dr. Hulda Clark. Now, if I were you and you're interested in resurrecting your life, your physical life, um, coming back into empowerment, uh, uh, physical empowerment, I would investigate the parasite phenomena and this lady has been the best source I have found um, on the condition and how to cure it. Actually she is the inventor of the Terminator which I now have and I use. It's a little electrical, um, well it, it's a para, it, 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 it works at a frequency that the bad parasites don't like, so it kind of kills them off if there's still any remaining in your body, that is. I've been doing a lot of cleansing, a lot of green juicing. I take a lot of, um, I take magnesium for my bones, 
I use natural calm, magnesium. I use kakadu plum. Now that's the highest vitamin C on the entire planet. I use a lot of, I've got a lot of parasite mixes I'm using now. I will not give out what I use because I'm not finished that journey yet. Um, that will in time. Um, I use bamboo. I think I just mentioned bamboo extract for my bones and for the collagen in my bones. I use Irish moss when I can get it. I can't get it at the moment. Um, the pure rubbery stuff that, that, that um, when you blend it with water that it, it turns into a gel. You know, I've been seeing carrageen and various things, but it's the Irish moss. Looking for, I use Shisandra, um berries for my eyes. I make tea with that and I also have it in powder form to drink. Um, chlorella, which quadruples the good bacteria in your body. Um, when I first took chlorella, I was violently sick about 10, 15 years ago. The second time I took it, I was violently sick those two days I had to go to bed spend my full day in the bed, be turning about, gripped in pain. Actually, it wasn't me that was gripped in pain, it was the parasite. <laughs> Only I didn't know it at the time. So when I take it now, I don't have such a problem because I use colonics very frequently, colonic irrigations. So we need to be doing this, people. Um, in celebration of my 60th birthday, I wish to let you know that you need to be embarking on a parasite cleanse. You need to stop putting junk into your bodies and turning your bodies into septic tanks, you know, full of dead, putrid, toxic waste, for this is killing you, you know. These parasites, once they, they they've reached a condition now with the bad parasites that they, they are moving out of your colon and going up into your liver and creating havoc. They're going into your lungs, they're in your brain. They are absolute monsters. They are evil. So I would say to everyone, you need, do not delay, you need a parasite cleanse. You need to stop putting these dangerous foods in your body in this day an age that we're living in. For this age will not tolerate you being out of line with your nature. That is the nature of what you're eating and what you're thinking. If your thinking isn't positive and good and your intention good, this age will not be supporting you. This is the age, this is like the mother ayahuasca age. This is the age where truth comes to everyone. Because when the sun passed into Aquarius with the governing body of Uranus which is the planet of, of truth pure consciousness that is Uranus Uranus, Uranus um, so we have no choice about this anyone who is not adhering to seeing their body as a temple and treating their body as a temple and treating everything they do and everyone they meet and every situation with good intention, you will find yourself struggling in this age because this age is not supporting it. So if you continue to feed toxic foods into your body and use toxic chemicals in your kitchen and your shampoos and your whatever you're using, makeups, cleaners, all sorts, if you don't root out the dangers toxic chemicals in your life you're gonna die you're gonna have a long slow painful death and you're gonna only have half lived up to that point because you're not alive until one you become pure consciousness in mind in heart in spirit and then to treat your body as a temple you will never put garbage into a temple you will only put in that which is feeding your soul, feeding your body to bring it to its highest vibration so that you operate at your optimum, optimal state within this world. So, that said, I am absolutely delighted 
and in full gratitude that I have arrived at the age of 60. I still have all my own hair and teeth. <laughs> there's plenty of lines, you know. There's plenty of telltale signs of the abuse over, over the years and the, the, you know, what all this did to me and what I did to myself, you know. There's those little scars, if you like. They're not on my mind. I don't have any scars on my mind whatsoever, on my soul, but on the physical body. And I still have a lot of repair work to do this year. But this morning, and what I've been doing entirely this year so far, is every morning when I get up, the first thing I do is I meditate. I connect with the sun. The sun's not out. I connect with my loved ones. Um, I Generally, when I connect, the sun will come out instantly. Anyhow, that's how it works. Um, unless we've been heavily uh, chemtrailed out. Um, I drink warm water and lemon. That's the first thing of the day. Then I do my Tibetan right, my five Tibetan right yoga practice. You know, I went from doing three of each to five the next week to seven the following week to nine um, and increasing each week. I haven't got beyond nine yet because I still find I haven't got the energy to go beyond that. So I stay with what my body feels. And there are particular ones you have to come into awareness of which ones you're finding difficult, which is some kind of blockage in your body or in your chakral system. Um, so you pay attention to that and... And be gentle with yourself. Um, after which, I, I, I do vocal toning, you know, especially A and D, A and B, so that I uh, when I'm vocal toning OM, which actually is the center of home, OM, when I vocal tone OM, there's a crystal whistling in my head. This vibration that goes on within my head is crystal. It's crystal clear. It's like a, a whistle. It's, 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 it's perfect pitch. And then I follow that by singing and dancing, for I love to dance or move, movement, and I love to sing. So I sing along to, um, sometimes it's meditation music, and other times it is the sound of the sirens. This is two girls from Exeter that I met supporting Narco Bear in Manchester on My Name is Bear Tour. Uh, they are phenomenal, really loving spirits, souls, bringing out consciousness music for us to listen to. And I have, I have a video of theirs um, on YouTube as well. If you, um, if you subscribe and like, <laughs> you will see on my tube. Or I will sing and dance to Narco. Um, and his tribe of medicine men. Um, again, phenomenal music, uh, consciousness music. So, so if it's modern, it's got to be consciousness for me. Intelligent lyrics with great energetic music. Now these souls are very energetic and beautiful, you know. Also, another band, uh, Rising Appalachia, which two sisters, Chloe and Leah. Um, and their band. Um, these are the bands that I've gone out to see live, you know. At my age, I'm going out to see live music. I didn't think that would happen again. But because of the phenomenal um, consciousness and the energy from both the crowd, the crowds there and the band presenting, it's beautiful. It's love. So if you're in a vibration of love and you're bringing a vibration of love, then yes, it's, it's a place to be. Anyhow, I thank my mum and my dad for um, allowing me the, the channel or the vessel to come into this world. Um, although I wanted to leave many times along this pathway, uh, many, many, many times, I'm very grateful that I'm still here because I've learned so much that if I had gone back earlier, that um, I wouldn't have experienced the insights and, and the experience of being consciousness experience in itself. It's quite an amazing place to be at. And the enjoyment of the food 
and the drinks these days, I don't need much. But my taste buds, you know, I, I, I am so grateful. Because when I go back to the invisible realms, I won't have these gifts of speech to express myself. It will all be telepathic from that side. So the gift of speech should be used very wisely always, my friends. Use it wisely. Not to condemn, but to support. But to speak truths. Sometimes people don't like truths if they're not living it. So, you know. To hear, to listen to some of the beautiful sound, to listen to the sound of the ocean, the sound of a running river, the sound of birds, the sound of some beautiful animals. I mean, the only disturbing sound I find is the human voice. <laughs> Still, <laughs> for most people haven't learned to become silent yet. We must come to the silence. The gift of speech, the gift of taste, the gift of Hearing, the gift of taste has been phenomenal. You know, my taste buds have just reached a whole new level um, with the juicing. Uh, and the gift of touch, to be able to feel. Feel the grass under your feet, feel the sand under your feet. Feel the water when you stand in, in a river. I stand in a river sometimes and meditate. The electric water and... And, and, and to appreciate water, the water within myself from the water all around. Now my idea is to purify all the water within myself by blessing myself. If we are mostly water, we should be purifying, purifying our, 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 our body, really. So with that said, I, I won't delay you any longer. I think that's enough for now. Um, I just wanted to celebrate my fifth, 60th, oh my God. I nearly said 50, 60th year on the earth plane, or rather the beginning of my 70th heading towards my seventh sun cycle decade, seven decades around the sun, you know. I more look at it in a galactic cycle these days rather than a just a, a sun cycle or an, an earth cycle or an age cycle. Uh, a galactic cycle is, is our 12 ages that the sun goes through in a cycle. That's the 12 signs of the zodiac, the 25,920 years. So in order to understand this life and what you're doing here, you absolutely need to understand astrotheology, the science of the stars. So that said, I bid you adieu for now. Namaste. I love you. Love yourself and love each other. I don't know what I clicked there, but it wasn't off.